Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to uh, validate a username and password for the second assignment for our class. So I'm going to make it very fast and hopefully it should be clear enough for you to understand and grab a good concept about how this, uh, this method works. Obviously, I've made my program, everything works in the end, but I'm going to be showing you how to validate the login information when you create your username and password. So without going more, more much in, into details about my own program and how it got it to work, I'm just going to show you that it does work when you create an account. So assuming you got everything good, assuming you validated everything on this main menu and only you could choose from the three, let's go ahead and create a new account. You'll be prompted to enter username of your choice. I'll just do ABC123 and it'll be en uh, prompted to enter a password of your choice. I'm going to do 123 ABC to show you that you could do both letters and numbers. So when I hit enter, it says your account has been created successfully. And when we go to log in by pressing one, it says you enter username. Of course, if we enter a wrong username, it'll say incorrect username. So I'm going to go ahead and hit log in again. I'm going to hit ABC123. Now I'm prompted in for a password since the username choice, uh, the username uh, gave us a correct uh, entry. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do this on purpose, make it wrong. And it says incorrect password. So I'm going to go ahead and log in again. We're going to do ABC123, 123, 123, ABC, and it works, and you can do whatever you want with your account. Now, without going more into this detail, I'm going to show you how to validate this. All right, I know I have a big code. I've been working this for a while, and this is all made by me, so I have my own method of making my own code work. So let's start step by step. And let's look into into what we have with our main function. Don't look at anything else right now. Just just um just pay attention closely what I'm about to say. So this is our main function. I've decided to initialize these variables. A user pick, uh, that's when they um, uh, select the options when they're prompted the menu. I made two string variables, a username and password, and I did not uh, made it, set it equal to anything or any string characters. I just made it a string variable. So I made those two, and then the only function I have in my main is the ATM, the ATM main menu. Now this will display the menu and, and will validate the user's pick when they prompted to enter a choice to select in the menu. So what I've decided, I made the ATM main menu. I've went ahead and passed user pick, username, and password from these variables right here. And of course, if you're doing function prototypes, be sure to also have it declared here as an integer. And since we're saving and passing information, you want to make it a reference also. So you need to add the AND symbol as stated here in this function prototype. In the integer now since my two of them are string I'm going to name it string and then put that the uh, the end symbol and another string and the end symbol so be sure to, to keep an eye out for your function prototypes if you're doing it that way so back to this function here I've passed those three variables into this function and of course as you can see when I call this function and develop this function here Everything from the uh, reference variable gets copied here, except that I'm going to be stating out the actual variable name. So it's going to be integer reference at user pick string reference username string reference password. So zero gets zero here. Nothing gets nothing here. Nothing gets nothing here so far. We have nothing so far. Now we display the menu. You could do it any way you want to display the menu. And we're going to be prompted to enter a, a selection of our choice, which I named it user pick. So let's say a user pick two to create an account. So two will be saved into this variable and then it'll go back to this next function. I've decided to make a main menu validation function to validate that whatever the choices you have here are the only ones you can choose. Now, um, all right, might as well I'll just tell you how it's done too. So, of course, just to maintain the consistency of the user pick, the username and password, I've, all, I've just included this into the function. And, of course, since it's the main menu validation, I made sure that it's also declared as an integer, string, string, and they're all using the reference variable using the at symbol. Now, going back here, we're importing all the information. User pick is two now. Username is nothing. Password is nothing. So now, the validation. 
while this statement is true, this message will be presented. So let's say the user pick is two. Two is less than one. Is that true or false? That is false because two is not less than one or two is not greater than three. So this will not be prompted to you if this parameter is false. So it'll return zero, it'll return nothing. Nothing is returned, it'll go to the next function up here. However, in this while statement, if you put zero, zero is less than one, that is true. Or if you put four, four is greater than three, then I made it so you'll be prompted that an error has occurred. Invalid option, please enter one, two, or three. Then I'm gonna put the function again, ATM main menu, that way you'll be redirected back to the menu here so you have another chance to pick your selection again. And of course, what you see here, don't worry about this, I just messed up. And of course, keep in mind, I'm always passing these three variables. This is still two, this is still nothing and nothing, and that gets sent back to the main menu. So this is still two, this is still nothing and nothing, and we're prompted to use another user pick again. Now this user pick will override what, what you have saved here. So when we hit two again, or let's say if we hit one, it'll go to one and it'll save it as the user pick. So it'll override, override it. So let's go back to the point, assuming this is false and we just go to the next function. This is the user pick validation. This is where the function will actually uh, process you know, it'll actually log in and create an account or quit the program. And, and again, <laughs> I'm passing a lot of variables and I'm pretty sure this method is probably the longest and the most inefficient method to do. So I'm passing these variables again. This is, um, let's see where we can create a new account. So this is still two. This is still nothing, nothing. We're going to use user pick validation. All the way down here is where it is. And again, be careful with the um, function prototypes. Always initialize it was the uh, uh, reference variable here. Now it's user pick validation. This is still two. This is nothing. This is nothing. The switch statement is just like an if statement. The switch will be using the user pick. So two gets transferred from here to here. And since two is the one that we want, it will skip the first case and it'll skip the third case. And of course, it'll skip the default because this will send these parameters. So case two will be selected since this user pick is two. And then the create account will be called in this function. And again, it's calling the username and password. Currently, we have nothing saved in these two variables. So keep in mind, just Keep in mind when going through these uh, formulas or uh, functions. So let's go to the create account. Uh, where is it? Right here. Okay. So again, always declare it in your function. String was the reference username. String reference password. Now, we'll be giving a see out statement such as here. We'll be prompted for a username and password. That's where you're going to prompt the username and save it here. This gets saved when the username or was the when the user input their information. Now, since it's returned 0, it's not returning any value, but it does not matter as long as you have these set as a reference. So whatever gets changed here or input it will be applied when it gets sent back to the menu. So this this return zero ends this function. However, let's say ABC123 is our username and 123 ABC is our password. That gets saved now into here. Let's go back to our uh, switch case. Now, that information is saved here in this function also. ABC123123 ABC. Now, that information will be resent to this next function, the ATM uh, main menu. And of course, you want to import the information from here and here back to the user, uh, the main function or the main menu of the ATM machine. So ABC123 is whoo, right here. ABC123, ABC123, ABC123. Main menu, let's go back here again. Now, we're back here. We're going to choose login. So we use the user pick. We hit one. 
and it goes through the validation and it goes through the case uh, the case function now this time keep in mind the reference variable still have the username and password saved here as long as we keep this add uh, the uh, and symbol as a reference with these variables it will save your information now since we pick one we are we are calling this function now again this will import the user pick which is one username is abc123 string is 123 abc <laughs> kind of little brain fart there that will get imported into this function call here so let's go to this function down here or up here in this case now, i know this is a big function but i'm pretty sure you guys will um have no issues making it more optimized all right so we're back here keep in mind that the function prototype still declares the integer string reference and string reference be very careful when declaring the function prototypes and the actual function now let's go back to the actual function of course user pick is still a reference a uh, string username is still saved abc123 um, password still saved 123 abc now what i did here i made another two strings i made a username number two and password number two I um I also did something fancy here. Um, you don't need to worry about this. The purpose is to validate the username and password. So later on, we'll be uh, prompted the screen to log in. So I made a C out statement saying log into your account. Enter your username. We'll be prompted to enter username and I made it so that it'll be saved into the variable username2. Now keep in mind the regular username is saved here. This is again another one. This is totally different, assuming you put the same information. I made an if statement now. This is how you validate the password. This is where you want to keep your ears open. Well, it's impossible. Your ears are always open at all times. But this is where the meat and potatoes are. Username 2. Let's say we did 123 or uh, ABC123 in here. And the username that we saved when we created the account, username ABC123, if these two match, then we'll proceed with entering your password. Now, if this is not true, we're going to be going here into the, L um, where is it at? Uh, just give me one moment to figure out where I, where I am. Username. Okay, here it is. I met, So if this is false, it'll go here to this other else F. Uh, else if statement if this is true then we'll be providing the user this screen or this message error incorrect username then he'll be prompted to go back to the main menu to give him another chance to recreate or change the password if not then they can't access and you have to quit and restart the program now assuming um, this is true we'll be giving another variable to the user to, to enter. This is going to be called password2. The main purpose of this variable, or this variable2, is to make sure two, those two matches up when inputting their information. So 123abc is saved here right now. If those match up, if this is true, based on the information given here, we will give them an, a message box that says, Login successful, then we'll be giving them the access menu of their um, um, bank account. If this is false or if they don't match up, we'll be giving them another error that says incorrect password and we'll be giving them um, the function call to go back to the main menu. Now, of course, is else this has nothing to do with this program, so ignore this. So this is it. This, you can do it any way you want to, but this is basically how I did it with my program. All right. This is how you validate, and this only can be done if you maintain that reference variable on each function called on the uh, other functions and make sure that they all be consistent with your function prototypes if you decide to do those. Now, I don't know how else I could say it, but this is basically it. Hopefully, on future assignments, I'll be able to um, work the other ones out and help you guys out as much as I can. But um, 
pretty much that's it. I hope you guys find this useful and I should see you pretty soon.